Hello, hello, hello. This is going to be an explanation of GitHub Copilot or more generally LLMs. And it's going to be different than a lot of other explanation videos that you might have seen in the past because we're not going to assume any AI or machine learning experience, but we're not going to stray away from the technical details either. We've got some nice visuals and animations coming up, so stick around for those. And just want to address the title of the video. It's obviously a little bit of clickbait. I don't think that you have to use AI coding tools to be a 10x engineer, though I do think they can enhance your productivity. I'm also not tied to GitHub Copilot. I'm not hung up on GitHub Copilot at all. I just think that these tools are good to use and good to understand. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first concept to talk about is called inference. And inference is just when we use a model that's already trained to actually generate new text. And for this step, we can actually treat the model like a black box. We're going to pass in some text and the model actually outputs whatever character, whatever specific character is most likely to come next in the sequence. And then we'll take that character and we'll go and append it to the input sequence and call the model again. We can just treat the model like a function for this step. So here we can have a simple example. Let's say we want to prompt the model to actually write a function that adds two numbers. So we might actually get the character D outputted to start the Python function and we'll append that to the starting sequence and we'll call the model again over and over. Okay, so now we understand how inference works, right? The model is just a giant autocomplete model that we can keep calling over and over, keep predicting the next character, append that to the starting sequence until we have the full response. But how would we actually create a model like this from scratch, right? Just given all the data we have, which is really just all the repositories and code bases that we can find on the internet. How would we use that data to create one of these models? So it turns out we don't actually need any labeled tabular data to train LLMs. A lot of machine learning models used to be trained with tabular data. We had some number of input attributes and we had a specific label column. And the model was supposed to learn to predict that label for all of the data points. But now we can just pass in giant chunks of text text, like all the text on the internet into these models. And the model just learns to speak the different languages, in this case, the different programming languages in all those repositories. So let's go over an example of a code snippet that might be floating around somewhere on the internet and inevitably ended up in the training data. So given the character D, the model would learn that E is pretty likely to come next. Given the sequence DE, the model learns that the character F is fairly likely to come next. Given DEF, the model learns that the character space is fairly likely likely to come next and so on until the rest of the line until we have the colon and of course the new line character and then the model learns that given okay def and then of course the rest of those characters the colon and the new line character we're pretty likely to have a tab and this continues on for all of the text in the training data so this is why we don't actually have to label any of the data and actually tell the model what to predict that's already embedded kind of contained in this text there's so many quote unquote training data points for the model to learn from so then during inference when the model model is given code snippets that it's never seen before, it's really just trying to predict what characters are likely to come next based on all the code it's seen. Okay, now let's talk a bit more about the cooler features of Copilot. If you ask the model to refactor code or translate it between different programming languages, it can do this fairly accurately. But the model was never actually trained or taught this particular task, right? All we did was feed code from all of these repositories online into the model. So how did the model actually learn to do this? Fully answering this question requires diving into the transformer, the neural network behind LLMs, and we'll go over that in another video, but we can talk about the concept of a word embedding. A word embedding is just a vector or a sequence of numbers that kind of encodes or encapsulates the meaning for that word. For example, the embedding for console.log would be fairly close to the embedding for print, a function from Python. Inside the model, there is a vector space, which is super high dimensional. The model has actually learned the meaning of these words. Let's just keep in mind that those vectors would have thousands of entries. The dimension would be extremely high and it wouldn't just be two or three dimensional. The bottom line is the reason the model can actually translate code between different languages is because the model has an internal representation for words and obviously words in one language can be similar to words in another language and the model actually knows that there is some similarity between those words. There's an internal representation of this. It's actually mapping those words and keeping them close together. Okay, another common question is whether these models are learning in real time from the code in your environment? Are they actually adapting and being trained on your code? So yes and no. So first we'll cover the yes. There's actually a process called in context learning, and that's just where the model is factoring in all the code from your environment, your IDE into its response. Essentially, you can think of all of that code being copy pasted into the prompt for the model so that it can give a more accurate and refined response. But the actual internals of the model don't change. These 
these are entirely frozen and the model is not being continually trained on the code in your environment. Let's make that a little more concrete. Let's say we had some complex mathematical formula that takes in all the code in your environment and it turns that into some sort of number that we can feed into this mathematical formula. And then this formula does a bunch of calculations. It maybe uses a bunch of complicated math functions to output some number that represents like the probability that some character comes next in the sequence, right? Essentially, that's what the model would use to predict whatever the code completion should be. The internals of that math formula and whatever calculations are done to actually predict what character should come next, we call those the model parameters. Those are entirely fixed, right? The model is not going to adapt its parameters based on the code in your environment. All right, that's about it for this video. This was an introduction to large language models. There's still a ton of concepts to cover. So let me know if you're interested in another video. There's also more in the description, in the pinned comment. So I'll see you soon.